Hello everyone, welcome to Adobe Live today. Um, I have a couple technical issues here that I'm going to have to address real quick, but we're gonna be using Photoshop on the iPad Pro. If you missed yesterday, did a quick overview <clears throat> of the interface, some tools and things we could do to spruce up our social media presence. I'm Spencer Nugent, I'm an industrial designer. I draw, I make stuff, I teach, I do a lot of things. And photography is one of those things I enjoy. And I enjoy telling stories on social media like many of you guys do. So we're gonna look at some ways to kind of get creative and do some fun stuff with their photos. So if you've never tried it, download Photoshop for the iPad Pro and you'll be able to get your feet wet as well. Okay, I'm gonna try and fix this here real quick while I'm talking to you guys. All right, let's see if I can get going here. This is not working for me right now. Um, I'm trying to get my iPhone on the screen. So if you can just bear with me, give me just a second. Um, just as a side note, once again, I will be checking the Behance chat. <laughs> so that's where I'm gonna be paying attention. If you guys wanna join in, say hey, say what's up. And uh, if you have any questions too, feel free to ask them there. I'm gonna let Tim hold it down for just a sec here while I try and get this to work. All right, let's see if I can do this one more time. Uh, pardon me here. All right, this is not working for me today, unfortunately. Ah, shoot. Okay, I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna start up. Actually, let me, <laughs> this is unfortunate, I'm sorry guys. Okay, let's go ahead and start with Photoshop on the iPad Pro and then hopefully, um, hopefully OBS, which is the software I use, will decide to uh, treat me right this morning. Let's see if we can See if we can get this get this to wake up. Hopefully you guys are, wa are waking up as well. All right, um, let's switch over to iPad here. Okay, so we've got Photoshop on the iPad Pro open. And I wanted to show you guys a cool little trick we can do here. So I'm gonna create a new file, but if you recall, Photoshop on the iPad Pro works a lot like Fresco, looks a lot like Fresco, Oops, that's Lightroom actually. Um, so let me open up Fresco here and show you guys if you've used this before the interface kind of looks the same and for those interested the upcoming illustrator for iPad Pro will have some of the same or similar elements as well um, Steve is asking is the iPhone on the same Wi-Fi as the gear um, I have a hard wire into my iPhone and I need to show you guys how to use Photoshop camera because it's really awesome and I just need to get this to mirror and it's just not working for me right now. So let's see if I can wake up, wake up my iPhone here. All right. Yeah, it is not behaving right now. Okay, see I even got the iPhone frame there. All right, well, this is the interface for Fresco. Uh, it's similar to Photoshop on the iPad Pro. And again, my apologies for the technical difficulties. I do have Photoshop camera on my uh, iPad Pro. It may look weird. Um, so I may switch to that and see if, if I can get that to show up. I may actually need to just restart my broadcast software here. So Tim, if you can give me a tip, that would be awesome.
All right, so this is Fresco, <clears throat> like I said, and if we go over to Photoshop here, you'll see that the layout is kind of similar. Um, Photoshop right now for me is set up on dark mode, so that's why it looks a little bit different. If I go to import and open, and let's jump to files, and I have a folder here of just some files that um, I have from my trip that I took this summer that I wanted to use. So let's go ahead and use DSC 01658. It's a beautiful photo here of the desert sunset that I took. All right, and just a quick recap on the interface for those who missed, you can definitely rewatch the stream, but just a quick overview. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here. On the right, we've got our layer controls and settings, basically things like naming a layer, uh, turning those layers on and off, adjustment layers, um, settings like that, and a few small filters that we can use as well. Okay. Okay, I got, I got some feedback from Tim. I'm gonna try something in just a sec when we switch over to Photoshop camera. And because it's, it's really awesome, I hope you guys get to jump in um, and, and try that yourselves. All right, so on the right, we've got all our layer controls. On the left, we've got things like brushes, text, uh, transform, move, and select, things like that. Okay, so I have this image here, and I wanted to show you something really cool, um, just an idea, if you will. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and crop. There aren't any crop presets here. Uh, sorry, not, not transform, but I'm gonna go ahead and crop this image. There are not any presets here that I have, so I'm just gonna kinda crop to what I think would show up on something like an Instagram post or um, approximating a bit more of a 4-3 aspect ratio or maybe a little bit less than that, all right? So I'm gonna hit done here, and now I have a little tighter crop. Like I said yesterday, in your Adobe Creative Cloud app on your iPad Pro, you can actually download additional fonts. So let's see if we have a font here because I'm gonna do a cool trick here with fonts um, to help you spruce up an image, okay? So I'm gonna jump to Creative Cloud and let's see, I'm looking for something kind of narrow. All right, so Let's see if we can filter here. And when I tap filter in the Creative Cloud app, it gives me some options. So I'm gonna tap on this width section here in properties and I want it to be heavy. So heavy narrow font is what I'm looking for. Okay. And now I'm just gonna tap off and let's scroll through and see if I can find something that I like. Ooh, this is kind of cool. The Nova Cento looks kind of cool in the middle there. And let's see. All right, I'm gonna use this Nova Cento Sans Condensed. All right, so there it is right there. And I'm gonna pick the bold variant, or maybe even the, well, I'll, I'll do both. The bold, and we'll do the ultra bold as well. Tap on the plus sign, that should download and pop right into our Creative Cloud apps and be available for us. All right, it's asking if I want to install. So I'm going to hit yes. Now they're installed. Let's swipe over. And if I tap on my type here, I should be able to create a new layer by just tapping. All right, so we're right now the type is set to Virna. We downloaded that yesterday, tried it out. So let's see if we can find Novo Cento. I'm just going to scroll here. Boom, there it is. Novo Cento Sans Condensed. And I should have two variants, bold and ultra bold. All right, so I can play with that. So what if, you know, I'm, I'm someone who likes quotes. I like word art. And if you've used Adobe Spark as well, it's a really powerful tool as well for social media that you can quickly create things. But what if I want a bit more control and I want to create my own thing? I'm going to add a little quote here. Um, I forget who it was. I think it, I think it was the uh, author of Alice in Wonderland, actually. So I'm going to start typing here. Not all who wander are lost. I like that. I like that quote quite a bit. Okay. So not all who wander are lost. All right. So let's make that keyboard disappear. If I want to move the type, there's this little manipulator right above the type. So that's how you were going to move type around the screen, reposition and so forth. All right. Let me just jump back to the chat here and make sure I'm not missing missing anything from you guys. All right. 
There we go. Okay, so in addition to repositioning, we can change the scale. To do that, I'm just gonna double tap, or actually tap on the type, and then let me use my pencil instead of my finger. Tap and swipe, select, and now I can increase the size of the text. I can change the color if I want to. And just for legibility purposes, I'm gonna do that right now. Let's go ahead and hide that keyboard. Zoom out and you can kind of see there is our font. Awesome. All right, or a typeface, if you will. Okay, so what if what if I want to create some effect, some effects? We'll kind of play here, uh, play around a little bit. So one thing I can do is let's say I want to import another photo and apply it to this photo um, kind of in an overlay style. So I'm going to go to files and I have these really cool uh, galaxy images here that I took. I did some astrophotography on this trip as well. So I'm just going to import that. And if I tap on my layers panel, you can see the stack order here. If I were to move this, almost like stacking papers, if you've never used Photoshop before, since we're getting started here, um, think of it kind of like stacking papers on a desk and I can move these around and reposition. All right. So let's position this somewhere here. If I want to scale it up, we can do that. Just tap the transform button. That allows me to scale. Now I just did that the hard way, but if I want to do it the easy way, I'm going to undo here. So instead of two steps, I can tap this little circle. All right. We talked about the circle yesterday. This is the touch modifier. So if I tap the circle and drag outside, now I'm scaling from the center so I can really just fill this image. All right, just hit done here. And what I want to do is apply this galaxy to my text. So how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to tap the clipping. Oops, I got to make sure I've picked the galaxy layer here and tap clip. And now I have a nice galaxy texture applied to my text, all right? And I can even move that around. So if I wanna reposition this, right, I can do that here on my document. All right, so maybe I'm just playing around and I wanna look at some options. Let's go ahead and select the other layer here. And to do that, sorry, I feel like I'm moving a little too fast for you guys, all right. So I've got my layers in my layer panel here. If we want an expanded view, the second icon down from the first icon on the right, right up here, that's gonna kind of blow out your layers so you can see the layer name, you can see what's happening, it gives you a little bit more detailed view of what's going on in your document. So at this point, if I wanna group something together, maybe I'm not totally settled on the design or, or the idea, I can do a couple things. For example, I can, I can tap on my text one more time here, and let's say I want to create a new line. I'm just gonna hit return. Uh, let's see. And yeah, maybe I'll settle with that for now. Okay, so now I have two lines and we can move this up if we want to. All right. And let's say, I, I'm, not, I'm not settled on a centered justification, so I'm gonna go with a left justification. Let's go ahead and move that. And now, We'll also transform our text, oops. So I'm gonna transform from the corner, which is gonna give me a nice proportional scale through there. All right, done. I'm not settled on the leading as well. So let's go ahead, select the, all of the text that we typed and now I can reduce that leading. Okay, just make it a little bit, a little bit tighter through there. All right, I'm gonna hide my keyboard and hit done. Now I can take a look. And again, if I wanna reposition this galaxy here, I can do that. I can even transform it, make it a little bigger. Oops, make it a little bit bigger here. So if you, <laughs> the reason I keep saying oops <laughs> is if you uh, transform and drag on the top or side handle, it's gonna give you a non-proportional scale or transform. And I really wanted a proportional scale and transform as I'm working. So that is why I kept saying oops there. All right, so I'm just gonna scale this up a little bigger because I really want some more of this kind of pink tone through there. We can also make adjustments to the layer as well. Um, 
So if we want to turn the clip off, we can do that and you can kind of see there's the graphic and there's the clip. Okay. And if I want to make some adjustments to my layer here, I'm going to tap on these three sliders. That's the third icon down from the top. That's going to pull up layer properties. Okay. I can drag this up. Now I can see the whole thing. So let's go ahead and add a clipped adjustment and we're going to play with we can either play with levels or curves. I'll just go with levels here, and I'm just gonna lighten this up a little bit. Okay, make those stars pop. Maybe increase the contrast. Just kind of play with it and find something that works for you. All right. And let's go back to our text. All right, so like I was saying earlier, <laughs> when I breezed through this, if we want to group these and be more organized, there's a way to do that on Photoshop on the iPad Pro, just as you would on the desktop. I'm going to tap this little button on the lower right side of the screen with three dots or ellipses. Okay, and that's going to give me some extra options. And the third item down, begin multi-select mode. Because this is a different device, our interactions are a lot different. So um, you kind of have to tell the app, here's what I'm doing, and I'm going to be selecting multiple layers. So we're going to begin multi-select mode. Now I can pick those layers I want to group. And you'll notice, hopefully you'll notice, there's a new icon on the right side of the screen. That's a folder. Now folder, if I tap on it, is going to group those items together. So I can manipulate, scale, move, um, and work work on those things collectively and together, just like we would in Photoshop. So for example, now you can see there is a group one. If I tap the little arrow next to it, we have levels one, that photo I imported, and my text as well, okay? And with that, if I wanna transform the whole thing, we can do that. We can transform all of our text if we want. Do something like that, hit done. Okay, and there we go. All right, even if I'm, if I'm not satisfied with this image, for example, on my clip, we can turn that off. We can import another image as well. Let's say I wanna try something else here and just kind of experiment. All right, let's scroll up. I think we used this one yesterday, but I'll use it again. Let's go ahead and use, actually, I'll use this one. And what I'm gonna do, is rotate this. We're gonna do some funky manipulations here. Rotate and place. Maybe do a little bit of a scale. Done. And I wanna blur this a little bit. The image is a little bit noisy. So I'm gonna add a slight blur. So I'm gonna tap this little diamond with a lightning bolt. And, oops, I'm not on the right layer here. Where'd you go? Where was my import? I think I made a mistake. All right, I'm gonna tap on group one. Let's go ahead and import. Oh, I think I canceled. That's what happened. All right, so I'm gonna import from files. Let's scroll up. Back to our image here. Let's scale this guy up. And rotate. And then after this quick exploration, we're gonna jump into Photoshop camera on your mobile device. So if you have that and you wanna follow along, awesome. Um, we're gonna be doing that next. Okay, so now I have my image and I'm gonna look at my layers here. I'm not sure why I'm not seeing this. Hmm. Okay, let's try this one more time. One more time. Okay, files. Go ahead and pull this in. And if this does not work, actually, that would be kind of cool. <laughs> and this is kind of how creativity works. Um, I like I like the astrophotography quite a bit, so I'm going to use that as the background. Then I'm going to drag this layer up. Right. Let's go ahead and pull my text out of that layer. So now I have my text over the astrophotography. I'm going to drag my landscape up and use that to clip my text. And that feels a lot better to me. That feels a lot better to me. And then I'm just gonna apply a slight Gaussian blur to my galaxy here. 
just to take care of a little bit of that noise. All right. And now I can kind of position this wherever I want. So like I said, sometimes creativity works in reverse where you're working and you know, maybe it's not working for you at the onset and we can tweak and change that. All right. So maybe we want to add a little bit to the text here. Okay. Um, one of the things on uh, you'll notice with Photoshop on the iPad is that not everything you have on the desktop is there and that's okay because it's a completely different device, completely different experience, but it also opens up interesting ideas for creative solutions. So for example, we did a little bit of this yesterday as well. If I want to add to this text, I might, have a more hand-drawn approach to how I add some elements. So I'm just looking at my brushes here. If you tap on the brush icon, again, you'll have a bunch of options here. And I just want a little bit of a textured brush. The Sumi Tilt seemed to work fairly well last time. So I'm gonna take a look at that and see if we can add to our text, all right? Okay, we got some comments here in the chat. See if you can take a picture via the desktop Photoshop using your iPhone, see if that connection works. I always do a screen share. Oh, <laughs> screen share via Zoom. I guess I could, I guess I could. I haven't, I haven't addressed the technical issue yet. I'm gonna have to restart my software. It's gonna pause for a bit. I've been chatting with Tim in the background a little bit, but for now, let's just keep going and keep drawing. All right, so maybe I wanna add a couple effects to my text here, just get a little creative with the brush, okay? So just outside the text, we can kind of brush in. If you want to directly manipulate and flatten those layers, you can do that as well. You just have to go in there, tap the layer, and you can flatten the layer just like you would in Photoshop on the desktop. And so I'd be able to kind of rough up the edges of the text if I want, but I just had this idea for a little bit of a hand-drawn and draw an uh, effect here on the text. All right, I did get a comment yesterday. Um, actually, I was thinking about it all day. <laughs> yesterday, someone was saying, oh, this is a lot of work for a social media image. And you're right, it is a lot of work, but it's really cool, the control you have, okay? If you're someone like me who spends a lot of time on social media promoting your work, or if it's for your business, then yeah, it's totally, totally worth the time and effort to have something truly unique that you came up with on your own, okay? And even then, you could also print these if you want. Do people still print photos? I do, but I don't know if, if a lot of people still print photos and print their work. All right, so let's keep going here. And just so you know, I'm using my Apple Pencil to draw all of these lines. Okay, and we can kind of zoom out and you can see the difference in the text here. All right, a little bit different. And just kind of helping this pop a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's funny how life works sometimes, guys, where <laughs> you check everything, you cross your T's and dot your I's, or cross your I's and dot your T's, apparently, for me this morning. And, uh, you know, you get ready to stream and boom, <laughs> one thing fails. <laughs> Uh, and it happens to be the main thing. So we'll get it sorted out for you. Okay, so let's just finish up this quick hand-drawn text effect. Or just add a clip layer and paint with a color and that would allow you to colorize this little effect that we're adding here. Okay, and maybe it's not just, oops, maybe it's not just the outside of the text. Maybe we just wanna have a couple little, couple little dots in here. All right, I think I'm gonna have to quit this and restart as well. Let's go. Got a little frozen there. This is not my morning. <laughs> As your iPhone is a wireless screen share, let's see a screen on computer. Oh, okay. Tim's giving me another idea. Um, I will do a quick reboot 
of the app and see if that helps after we complete our little effect. All right, so like I said, if you wanna just keep painting, you know, if you wanted to add to the horizon even, we could do something cool like that. There's a an artist online I follow and they kind of like to doodle over their pictures. It's really cool. So if you wanted to you know, get creative, you could do that as well. Like I said, I forgot, I forgot the uh, attribution to the quote, but you could potentially write that in. And now we have a more interesting image that we can share on our social media. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and reboot here. It's gonna pause for a sec and I'll be right back. Back. <laughs> Sorry about the trouble here. Give me just a sec. You know, for all the advances we've made in technology, sometimes technology, and maybe it's just that technology is so advanced, I don't know. It almost has a mind of its own. So here we go. Woo, we got it working. <laughs> all right, guys, <clears throat> we are back. We are back. Now you've seen my my whole iPhone screen. Yes, I'm a monster. I have red. Uh, I have red notifications on my phone. All right, so let's open up Photoshop Camera. So Photoshop Camera, if you've never used it before, is a really powerful and fun app. If I were to hazard a guess, it's a it's like if if Sensei and Adobe Capture had a baby. This is Photoshop Camera. Um, <laughs> So here we go. <clears throat> I'm going to open up Photoshop camera. So first thing you'll notice here, let me actually turn that off. Um, I'm in my, my little studio. You can see, hey everybody. Um, well, I don't want to wreck the place, but here we are in my studio. It's working. <laughs> All right. So Photoshop camera is a powerful way to leverage the power of, like I said, Sensei and probably some capture stuff in here, but we have more importantly lenses and your hardware, super smart, um, and we can do a lot of cool things. So the first thing we have is a familiar interface that looks a lot like other camera apps that you may have encountered. We can flip the camera as well. Oh, that's probably probably gonna give you like a, a some, some, some sort of matrix effect. Um, we also have lenses, okay? Lenses and filters. So I'm gonna tap on a few of these buttons and show you what happens, all right. So we have a portrait mode here, okay? So that's just gonna jump to portrait. And as soon as I tap on portrait, we have some dots that appear just below our little, uh, what do you call it, shutter button, okay? Some little, dot, some little dots. <laughs> Steve says he didn't know the unread counter went that high. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I need an assistant. I feel like okay so now this is portrait mode we can turn that off and you'll see that's the normal mode you can turn it on again so it's it's trying to make some enhancements so if you're if you're like me and you take selfies from time to time this is a great way to do it so let's take a selfie hey all right so now I have a selfie capture and I'll show you what we can do with that in just a minute if I swipe left to right there's also other options all right so you can pick what's best for your skin your look and so forth all right so there's other filters, pardon me, other filters as well. Oops, <laughs> notification came in. All right, so there's other filters as well. We have, for example, this pop art filter and it'll give you a live preview of just the craziest, coolest effect here, right? Isn't that awesome? So again, if you're looking for, <laughs> we must contact the Guinness Book of World Records for that number. Oh my goodness. You guys are not going to let me live that down, are you? Um, so I can apply a filter live. We can see what this looks like live here in Photoshop camera. Pretty awesome. I can swipe through. There's other effects, for example, right? Some text. We can try some other stuff. These are spectrum filters. So download the app, see what you can get. All right and try those out. All right. Well, a couple more things here. What if what if I've already taken some photos? If like I said, if you're like me and sometimes you take photos with an SLR, you might want to modify, enhance or use those photos in other ways. So, we can actually do that. All right. Let's go to my little import here and I'm going to go to my camera roll. All right. And I think I have well, 
let's just pick from our recents here. <clears throat> All right, so I, I have this picture, me and my boys, we went, uh, went hiking, right? So Photoshop camera is immediately going to suggest some improvements to our image, all right? <laughs> it's gonna immediately make some improvements to the image, which is cool, that's like saving time. So if you want more control, Photoshop on the iPad, I think is the way to go. If you wanna kinda get yourself a bit closer to something awesome, use Photoshop camera because that's gonna make some improvements to your uh, image. All right, so I'm gonna tap, I don't have to hold this up anymore. I'm gonna tap lenses here and under scenery, I have some options, okay? We can modify the filter intensity. So if I wanna up that filter intensity, you'll see how the image changes right there. If I slide this back, okay? It's going to reduce the amount of, of the effect applied to it's gonna reduce the it's gonna reduce the amount of the effect applied to the image. Sorry, I was just looking at the chat and you guys are are hilarious this morning. Um, I can also modify the structure as well. So let's go ahead and slide that. So that's just gonna help with the details as well. So again, really powerful tool. Um, you can imagine hiking. This is actually a photo I did take with my DSLR. Um, you know, hiking, popping an S SD card into your reader right on your phone load up Photoshop camera and you're able to just quickly run some edits. Um, Lightroom's great as well, but if you just want a simple way to do it, Photoshop camera, try it out. Okay, so just like we did before with the uh, actual live preview, we can swipe left and right and see some cool effects, all right? So I can swipe here and it'll give me some options for the look that I'm after. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one for example, all right? But let's say I don't really want those filters. I wanna try something else. Photoshop camera is actually powerful enough, particularly on landscapes, it's really, really fun. And I'm gonna show you a couple um, different options as well. So this is called Blue Skies, okay? So it's actually gone through. We can zoom in here. Actually, we can scale this effect. All right, so if I scale down, you'll see that the little checkerboard is there. It's actually gone through, right? Detected the landscape and I can replace the sky in my scene. So pretty cool. We can swipe through and get some other options as well if you we wanna place those, all right? So pretty handy. So if you're not happy with, say the clouds in this scene, I can jump to blue skies and have that now be an option. Of course, it's gonna be a little bit off in the reflection in the water in this instance, but it's pretty fun um, and pretty awesome to play with that. Thank you, Lloyd. And what's up, Rob? Good to see you here. This filter is coming for your job, maybe. I'll show you some other really cool filters um, that'll blow your minds. All right, so let's go to Reverie. All right, so Reverie is one that I discovered in the filter gallery and I'll show you how to get there as well. So this is actually really cool. It creates an animated sky background for your photos. So if, again, if you're like me and you share stuff on social media, um, for those who follow me online, I'm gonna blow up my feed now with um, a few of these that I'm gonna share, but we can also swipe through these effects. So it, it not only changes the background, but it changes the mood and lighting of the photo. Again, something that normally would take several steps to accomplish, we can do this very quickly with Photoshop camera. So we have options at the top. Um, one is to send to Photoshop Express. So if you're working on your mobile phone, Photoshop Express is a way to um, create additional edits as well. Um, we can move and scale, like I said, on our background, looks like there's a rocket here as part of part of this effect. So if we want to add a rocket to our scene, we can scale that and put it in. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get that out of my scene. If you notice, the background is animated right now. But what if you don't want that animated? You can actually tap this button, the play button, and now it's just a stationary still image. Okay, but still you get that effect of replacing the background. Here's a couple other, a couple others that are pretty cool as well. All right, 
we can turn off enhancements or turn on enhancements by tapping the magic wand. And if you want further control and adjustments, tap the icon in the top right and you'll notice that some options now appear at the bottom of the screen, okay? So we have shadow, highlight, clarity, vibrance, exposure, things that you may be familiar with, blacks and saturation, with something like Lightroom, right? So if I wanna brighten this up a little bit, or I wanna make it a little darker on the whites, we can reduce our contrast if we want more of a, a wash look. And I'm just dragging with my finger here, okay? Again, this is on my mobile phone, so we don't. I don't have the Apple Pencil here to help me. Um, you can load Photoshop Camera onto your iPad. However, it just shows up as a jumbo um, mobile app. So it is meant for your mobile phone. Okay, if we wanna enhance the clarity, we can do that as well. And let's say I hit done here. And now I want to kind of share this. How do we do this? Well, at the bottom, we have options. I can save it to my camera roll. And because it's animated, it's actually gonna save as a video, which is actually pretty cool because if I wanna throw this into something like Premiere Rush or send it to my desktop and have this as part of perhaps, um, you know, a vlog that I created of my hike that day, I can do that, it's pretty cool. And remember what I said yesterday, social media for me is not necessarily about representing reality exactly, but more so expressing my perception of reality. So here's an opportunity where, you know, maybe I, I did have this, this powerful experience. Granted, this is during the day and I'm modifying this, but maybe this captures the emotion of the moment. So I can hit save. I'm going to tap that button. It's going to save to camera roll, but it's going to ask me how I want to do that. I can save it in a few formats and Photoshop camera is doing some of the heavy lifting for me in creating the size and formats that I need to share. So something like on Instagram, might be better to have a square and I can pan across if I want to capture more of these shooting stars or if I want to center my boys on the photo here if I want to scale in too, I can do that and that's going to be my crop or I can scale out so really powerful and flexible tool or we can have a vertical Instagram or horizontal I'm gonna go with the horizontal for this one and hit save to camera roll all right, so that's gonna save to the camera roll. So now when I jump to my photos under my recents here, I now have a five second video that if I wanna manually share to something like Instagram, it's not gonna loop here because this is just the default player on my phone. Awesome, Robert just installed Photoshop camera on his Samsung Galaxy, or is it the, I'm not sure of the name, Samsung 20 Ultra, I'll just use the name you said. Um, but I can hit play again and you'll see that repeat, all right? And there's there's other apps and tools that'll help you um, create an animated GIF if you wanted to as well. And yes, it is a GIF. Um, <laughs> so that's another thing you can do. So like I said, you can take photos live like this and see the effect and the filter. I wanna show you one more cool thing though. Well, there's so many cool things that I'm gonna show you, but here's what I'm gonna show you right now with this view. So let's say you're you know, interested in the spectrum look and let's take another selfie in the studio. What's up? Okay, now I look kind of pained there. Let me, let me do that one more time. There we go. So I took a selfie and let's say I want to modify this selfie, okay? So I'm gonna tap on the icon to the right of my shutter button, okay? And that's gonna give me two options. I have Photoshop Camera Studio or PSC Studio and I have my camera roll. So if I wanna import something from my camera roll, I can do that or I can look at what I saved from PSC Studio. And I was kind of clowning a bit this morning, taking some photos as well. But let's go to the one I just took right here, okay? So there's that photo. I was using this chromatic lens, okay? <laughs> Tim says, I can say GIF, it's okay to be wrong. <laughs> Actually, the creator of the format calls it a GIF. Um, let's, let's start a war on Adobe Live this morning. Just kidding, we won't do that. Okay, so I've taken this photo, it is in my PSC studio. And that gives me some flexibility, which is actually pretty cool. So now I can tap on lenses. If I tap on lenses, 
okay those options pull up again and as i as i swipe not only on the image but i can go through the lens gallery and look at different options so it has saved this image in a way that allows me to go through these filters and just swipe through so if i didn't like that initial look but i kind of like this look here all right i can now save that to my camera roll all right i'm going to save that version of it we can tap on it again go to my lenses let's try this artful lens okay let's let's take rob's job from him i think it was that no it was the pop art that's what it was boom <laughs> <laughs> so there we go let's say i want this look okay we can tap on that arrow and i can save to my camera roll but not only can i save to my camera roll i'm not going to rate the app right now let's try this picture as well not only can i save to the camera roll but i can also share directly to whatever social media i want so i'm going to go and let's minimize our filters just hit share and again I have these options so I'm just gonna pick free form here hit next and it's gonna ask me where I want to share this to all right so the first option was to save directly to your camera roll and this is where you know the operating systems have their ways of doing things um, but I could tap more for example and that's gonna allow me to send a message to someone or I can save to my files and so forth. Those are some of my friends I was chatting with, by the way. All right. I can also send in messages. So if I want to message someone, this photo, I'll go ahead and send it to a, a friend of mine here. Boom. So I've sent, sent that to him. Um, or I can share this directly to Instagram. Okay. So once I hit post to Instagram, for example, I have options. I can post to my feed or my story. I'm going to go ahead and post to my story on sketchaday.com so if, if any of you fans are watching by the way um, I'm about to blow up my feed so I can just hit my story boom and there we go so let's go back to Photoshop camera all right so there we go pretty cool all right so let's say you've been using the app for a while and ooh, that's that's cool find a face it's even it's even telling me to find a face super super smart <laughs> Rob says no okay <clears throat> Let's say I'm using this for a while. You know, I'm, I'm kind of tired of the, the built-in filters. Oh, I didn't want to try this one. There's a food filter option. So let's go to camera roll. I did save some food, I thought. Maybe it didn't save here. I think I have to go to my album that I created for Adobe Live. Was it that one? Nope. Ah, there we go. So I've got some food there. I've got some funky photos as well. Let's pick this set of tacos. It says, tap to see suggested food lenses. So this is how smart it is. I just imported a photo. I didn't tell it what it was, but it said, tap to see those suggested lenses. It's a really smart app. So I can tap and it jumps to food. All right, so here we go. Let's look at some options. If, you know, social media, if you like to take pictures of your meals, you can do that. All right, we can swipe through those filters right there. I actually like, this was a awesome taco restaurant I went to in San Francisco. So I can tap on food, for example, right there. I kind of like this one. And now if I want to go in, make some additional adjustments, okay, again, we can adjust our clarity, for example. All right, we're gonna get some fringing on the edges if we're not careful. So I don't want to go. I don't want to go too ham on that. All right, maybe I want to drop the shadowing just a little bit. Hit done because it made some automatic adjustments for me. Right, it's trying to do trying to do some of the heavy lifting for me, and now we can share that again. And I'm gonna go ahead and share actually let's go back so the aspect ratio on this photo is a little bit different and I want it to to be more of a story format and I know for my stories I'm gonna have nine 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 by or yeah 69 as the ratio so now I can kind of position this I want to get some of these plantains in there with with my tacos mmm so good this was a really good meal by the way now I'm now I'm getting hungry hit next Let's share that to Instagram again. Boom. 
and I can share to my story. All right, just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna save this to Photoshop Studio so that now I have it in my photo Photoshop Camera Studio um, files as well. All right, cool. So, like I said, let's say you get a little bit tired of, of the lenses, or not even tired, but maybe you're curious about some additional things. There's an icon in the top left of your screen, your viewfinder window, that we can tap. So I'm gonna tap on that. All right, and this is the lens library. Pretty cool. So I can actually go through and if I want to try out some new lenses, I can do that, okay? So there's a featured lens, retro poster, we've got Artful 3, some floral stuff, Tempest, that looks interesting, I wanna try that. Um, there's Grit, I love black and white photos, so I may try that one later as well. Interstellar, ooh. Let's tap details and see what happens, okay? So you can create lenses as well, I should mention. I haven't tried it yet personally, but there's an option here. It gives you a little bit more information on that. To create a lens, do you wanna be a, a lens creator? It's gonna open the website and explain that to you. So if you're curious and wanna try that, you can apply and get your lens featured as well. All right, I do wanna try Tempest as well. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add the lens. All right, so that, now that's downloaded and I'll have access to it in Photoshop camera here. All right, and like I said, I wanna try the grit because I like black and white. So I'm gonna add that. This is really gonna save me so much time when I'm doing my edits for my DSLR as I go on hikes and travel and I'm really excited for that personally. Okay, so let's jump back to camera and we should have those here in our options. So I have night shift. I can even turn that on now and it's gonna try and throw a night background around my head. It's not that great for portraits, at least I've noticed. So I'm actually gonna jump into my camera roll here. And like I said, I took some photos on this trip. So let's try a couple of these and see what we come up with. All right. So this is a photo I actually took this morning just outside my house, kind of blah, kind of boring. Um, you know, there's a construction site and whatnot. So I'm gonna to jump to lenses and let's try Interstellar here. So I'm gonna tap on Interstellar. Whoa, completely changed that photo. Now it actually looks like a photo I would wanna share. And it's completely just mind blowing how quickly and how cool this is. Like, I feel like, I feel like it's Christmas, you know, and you're opening a present. That's the feeling I have looking at this photo because like I said, it wasn't really that great a photo. So let's go back to the original and I'll show you. All right, boom. <laughs> Tim says, my wall doesn't look like a sky. No, it doesn't. But if I were outside, yes, I could do that. Actually, I do have another photo I could um, test with that. So there's the original, okay? We're gonna tap interstellar, it's a filter that was in the gallery. And now I have some really, really cool options. Okay, boom, there we go. So let's go ahead and share one of these again. So I'm just gonna go back, let's save that. Um, actually, let's do a couple more edits and then we'll share them. All right, here's another one we can try. So I'll let that download. This is again from that trip. So the first thing it does is make some adjustments if you wanna see those off. That's the natural raw photo. Here it is with those adjustments that's bringing out those details. Next, I can open up a lens. We can try something like Tempest this time. Whoa, now it's all stormy. That is so cool. And we can scroll through some of these and look at how the lighting and the effects. Whoa, that one has a skull. Um, look at how the lighting and the effects overlay the whole photo. Like to do something like this in Photoshop, totally doable, right? It just takes time. It takes time. We can even scale those effects again in the back. So if I want this to have a bit more scale on the clouds, just pinch to zoom on your screen and that's going to allow you to scale up that effect. And I really like this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this as well. Let's do a couple more here. How about this one? All right, so again, instantly makes those improvements for us. 
all right and then we can get to creating and sharing all right and then let's let's save a couple of these shoot them over photoshop add some text see if perhaps we can create a collage and then share that as well all right so these apps can work well together um in tandem okay so there it is without and with those improvements it's making me th making me think i should use this instead of lightroom sometimes now all right so i'm gonna go to my lenses and let's take a look at night shift this is another sky effect oh look at that that's just absolutely absolutely amazing all right we can swipe through some of these looks like we've got is that the moon or another planet I'm not quite sure here's an animated one that we can share so I'm gonna save this because I do want to have at least some animated options here as well and since we've been using this image already in the demo I'll do another one as well so here we go we've got this is on the way to Arizona um, coming down a ridge called Cedar Ridge or Cedar Bluff I think um, okay so lenses and let's go to night shift Ooh, gorgeous absolutely gorgeous okay that is that is really cool <laughs> that is really really cool and delightful so I'm gonna go ahead and save this so now when I go to PSC or Photoshop camera studio we have each of these kind of saved out so let's go ahead and share some of these animated images all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and share the original actually let's do Instagram 54 crop a little bit next and I'm gonna share that to my Instagram all I have to do is tap if you're like me and you have multiple accounts what you want to do in Instagram itself is just tap hold and you can switch switch your account so I'll go ahead and share to my other account and let's see just hit share to story boom so now I have that on my Instagram feed all right let's go ahead and, and switch my account back all right and so if I want to share it to my other account I can do that as well okay so let's go back here and I do want to share this one so I'm gonna share and we'll do I'll just go ahead and share this raw image to my Instagram one more time super super easy guys <laughs> super super easy all right share to my feed all right now I can scale that up hit next next and I'm just gonna go ahead and share that all right and that's just gonna upload a video of that to my Instagram so there we go now I have that photo so again super powerful tool that we can use to modify and edit our images all right let's do one more here all right let's do one more image let's see which one do I want to play with and hopefully you guys feel inspired to just try something out try something new again pretty blah image just from my neighborhood this is like a gravel pit I, I just love the sky effects I do love uh, oh we should do grit that's what we should do let's try some grit doing another quick selfie since we since we just downloaded that filter all right it doesn't even matter if the filter that's activated right now isn't what I want or the lens because I can always change that okay so there we go and I can go to grit here oops let's go ahead and pick my photo then change the lens to grit okay and now I have some options so it's trying to eliminate the background for me all right and also up the contrast if I had a cleaner background it would probably probably help a little bit there um, so let's see if perhaps even this one that I took this morning would work a little bit better so I'm gonna go to grit all right and now I've as you can see it's clipped out the background I can make those adjustments let's make the automatic adjustments and then if I want to up up my highlights for example I can do that or it might be the exposure itself whatever we want to play with and again we can always go ahead and share those 
to the socials. All right, so let's say I want to pop this back over to Photoshop, okay? So let's go ahead and I really love this image, but as far as I know, Photoshop on the iPad Pro will not handle video. So let's go ahead and export. A static image. Now remember, if you tap the play button, that is going to allow you to export that still. All right. I do want to just increase the exposure just a bit more here. All right. Just make it a little brighter. Okay. A little bit finicky because I'm using my finger here to do that. So now I'm going to hit done. We can share that. Hit next. And I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I could just share it, save to my camera roll, actually. And it should pop up on my iPad Pro. That's one of the cool things about Apple devices. If you are using one, is that whole ecosystem. When I save to my camera roll, it will show up on my, on my other device as well. Let's go ahead and share or save this one as well to my camera roll. And again, if we want to try some other effects on the same image, we can do that. All right, let's do pop art on this one or explore the artful options even. actually cool what <laughs> and again we can scale these effects reposition them if we want to all right and now I'm gonna go ahead save this to my camera roll So once the photo is saved to your camera roll, you can almost stack effects as well. Um, I haven't done a ton of exploration on this, but we can stack those effects. So here I am stacking a portrait effect, or we can stack a pop art on top of a pop art effect, for example. So it gets really crazy. Um, but that's because it's no longer in the PS uh, Photoshop camera studio and now in my camera roll. So where I had that initial text that said, what? Um, as you can see, where is it? Right there. As you can see there, now I have two words that say what. So it's like, what, what? And I can go ahead and save this if I want to, to my camera roll as well. All right. So now let's see, let's see, I've got one, two, three. I wanna do one more, one more image. So I'll take a new one and then we'll just make a, a little triptych in uh, in Photoshop. All right, so now I've got another photo and let's go to pop art here. I have an idea in my head for a triptych, so that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so now I have that. Should be in my Photoshop camera studio. Let's tap on that. Now I can save that to my camera roll. Okay. And let's jump over back to the iPad here. Yeah, I'm not sure what went wrong this morning, but um, yeah, that was something. <laughs> Everything just stopped working all of a sudden. All right, so I'm going to transition back to my iPad here. And like I said, we should see in photos if everything's all synced up. There we go. So now I have these creations that I've saved and more should populate in as they sync to the cloud. All right, so let's jump back here because our moon has not synced in yet. Oh, yeah, there it is now. OK, so we can do a couple things here. We can create a new document and import, or 
just import and open. I'm gonna import and open from my photos. And here is that image that we created in Photoshop camera. All right, pretty cool that we can just pop that right in once it's all synced up. Oh shoot, I did forget to, to mention the schedule ahead of time today. So I'll save a, I'll save a little time for that to um, show, you, show you guys that in a little bit. Okay, so this is actually the Grand Canyon. So again, if we wanna add some text or if you wanna add a border, we can do that. Um, let's try and do something a little interesting here. We did have in our files yesterday, I did import a little bit of texture in this torn paper. All right, so we can use this again if we want, or really just whatever whatever texture you want, All right? If you had something else that you wanted to throw in here, you could as well. I'm just gonna scale this up, hit done. Actually need to scale a little bit bigger here, guys. Boom, so there we go. Now I can tap on my selection tool, tap again, and I have some options. We're gonna paint our selection right here. Boom, just like that, right? Kind of behaves like the magic wand tool in Adobe Photoshop on the desktop. That's the, that's the way I like to think of it anyways. And now we have some options, okay? At the bottom we have deselect, mask, erase, or invert. If I invert, it's just gonna flip what is selected, but I'm really just trying to capture that paper because I want this to feel like a torn piece of paper almost. And then at the bottom, perhaps add some notes or writing um, to this, this, uh, this image, this travelogue, if you will. So now I can tap more. And under more, I have the option to transform that selection, select similar, or more importantly, refine edge. So we're gonna tap refine edge here. Okay, and the reason I'm doing this is if you notice, there's these little fibers in the paper that aren't being quite captured. It looks a little bit blurry on, on the stream perhaps, but there are some fibers here that I'm not quite capturing. So I'm going to up my edge detection radius. And as I up this radius, you'll notice, okay, that the selection is changing. So watch again, there's a default selection. Now I'm gonna slide over and there's more of that fringe being selected now, okay? I can feather the selection, I can increase the contrast and I can also shift the edge. By shifting the edge, I'm actually capturing now more of these fibers like so. So when I zoom out, you can see I now have a more detailed selection and a selection that I didn't have to sit there and spend time trying to uh, meticulously draw and recreate. So that is the power of Adobe Sensei and Adobe Photoshop on the iPad Pro, all right? So if you're just getting started with Photoshop on the iPad, take some time to, iPad Pro I should say, take some time to explore and see uh, what these settings do, play with them. Don't be afraid to play and jump right in. Um, I always say, the, the way we learn is just by doing and failure is really an opportunity to learn. So don't be afraid to go in there, mess up and try some new stuff in other words. Okay, so now there's an option here at the bottom. I can out, output as a layer mask, new layer or new layer with mask. Those are some options. Um, I'm gonna just keep it as a selection, but just wanna call that out. If you want those options, they are available to you as far as how your selection is made. All right. Okay. Maybe today is just cursed in terms of uh, technical difficulties, or I'm cursed today, I should say. <laughs> All right. We can also change the view mode in our selection. So if I wanna change that to an overlay, we can do that. If I wanna to change to having it be on black, which you're not really gonna see because it's already black, or on white, or we can do black and white so you can see a bit more accurately what's being selected. And again, we can go back and modify this. So if we want less contrast, if I decide, hey, you know what? I really don't want that much of a fringe in there. We can up the contrast. And now you can see I have a more refined edge. So pretty handy if you're trying to create a nice sharp selection. Um, we can also feather this ever so slightly if we want. 
Or if you want to do it a ton, you can also do that as well. All right, I'm going to drop the contrast just a little bit here. And so it's going to output as a selection. Let's hit done. And now I have this selection. OK, so if I turn it off, you can kind of see where this is going or where this may go, I should say. I've got a selection here. I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to tap this layer. And then there's those three dots on the right side of the screen, the last button on the, on the right. I'm going to tap that. And I'm going to hit cut. So that's cutting the paper. OK, it's cutting the paper out now. So now what I can do is tap those dots again, and I'm going to just hit paste. And we can position this wherever we want. Okay. The goal here really is I want to apply this photo as a clip, just like that, to my image that I imported. All right, so now we have a little bit of that torn paper look. And I kind of just like that, just as a quick effect. Um, you could, of course, like I said, get creative and think about ways that you might modify your own photos. If there's a texture you like, maybe it's fabric, maybe it's something else, you can do that. I'm just gonna crop in here just a little bit. I've got a little sliver here that I need to get rid of. Okay, so now I've got my crop and let's go ahead and make a new layer. I'm gonna drag this below like so. And you'll notice that my document has a transparent background. So I wanna have some color or element there. It could be another photo, for example, something we could pull in. And if I wanted to do that, again, I can just tap on files here and import something at the bottom. This has nice tone since we're using it again or have been using it. Right, I could have something like that. Or if I wanted this to even feel otherworldly, for example, I could go ahead and import one of my astrophotography scenes here. All right, so we could import that, flip it around like so. Let's scale this up and rotate. All right, just like that. And this feels kind of intense, so I'm gonna make a new layer. And let's paint with just some black or deep, deep purplish black using a nice soft brush. So again, if you wanna to get to other brushes, right now brushes don't sync, but I know that's a feature being worked on, so you can watch out for that. Um, but here, I'm just gonna use the soft round pressure opacity brush because it's gonna give me the ability to kind of massage how I'm painting here. And so I'm on a new layer and I'm just gonna paint underneath our rocks here. Now, if I want to change the position of the paper, I can just drag up like so, all right? Drag up, we can scale just a little bit. And you can kind of see, now we have this almost floating look to this piece of rock. It's kind of cool, feels otherworldly almost. Let's go ahead and invert this. And I'm going to just drop my opacity here because I want it to feel like it's floating, but I also, also don't want it to be too intense. Just want the contrast in the right spot. So painting along the outside here, just to create a little bit of a vignette. We can do that by creating a new layer as well. And just on the outside, painting in another quick vignette. Now we have two options, as always. I think text is important if you're doing something um, that may seem unfamiliar to someone. Um, it can kind of help add context and tell that story. So we'll add some text and then we'll also paint in a few highlights just to enhance things here and make them pop even more. All right. <laughs> My friend just texted me back because I sent him a random, <laughs> I sent him a random uh, selfie from today's demo. Selfie explosion. Yes, selfie explosion. That's actually the title of getting started today selfie explosion um, but you've actually given me an idea so thank you <laughs> all 
Good morning. We got Paul joining. Tim Mobest says, layer zero, layer one, layer two. Looks like my documents. Yeah, I said yesterday, I'm not the most organized. Um, and if you're like me and are involved in what I call creative chaos, you likely have files that are saved as final one, final two. No, this is really final. Final, final, final. No, this is really final. <laughs> and on and on and on. It's a thing. It's totally a thing. All right. So I want to make I want to make some highlights pop here and then let's add some text and I'll tell you what's ahead for today. OK, so to kind of help with the highlights a little bit, Photoshop camera did a great job, but I want this to pop a little bit more. We have the moon or the celestial body. I don't know if it's the moon. It's a celestial body. And I want to add some highlights on the ground. So I'm going to make a new layer here and now make sure I have, okay, soft round opacity brush. Cool. That's what I want. Let's reduce the size here. And I'm just going to do a couple test strokes to see, see what we're working with. Okay. A little too big. So I'm going to scale down right there. And now I can kind of zoom in on the landscape and paint in any additional highlights that I want. Okay. And we'll, we'll modify the opacity here as well. But I just want this to kind of pop a little bit more just on some of these highlights. Okay. You could also do that. There's, there's other ways to do this as well. You could use uh, curves to kind of increase things, but I do like the control of using the Apple pencil and being able to just kind of paint where I want these effects and highlights to be. Okay. So that's what we're going to do here. Just continue to paint in a little bit. All right. So if you want to modify your brush settings as well, okay, you can adjust things like flow. So the reason I tapped on that button is I was putting down a lot of uh, pigment, if you will. So I'm going to drop my flow a little bit so I can just kind of build up as I go right here. And if there's a spot you don't like, you can always erase. That's what I'm doing right there. And let's capture some of these rocks up front. Just kind of make those a little brighter. Something like that. So what I can do now, looks like I made some mistakes down there with my palm. So let's go ahead and erase those. Not a big deal, guys. Just erase those. Um, so now I can tap on my sliders. Oops, I was already up. And under layer properties, we can play with our blend modes. So I'm going to try overlay or color dodge. Or we can try linear dodge as well. All right, and then play with play with the intensity until we have what we really want. If we want to add a glow to the moon, we can do that as well, fairly simply. I like working on lots of layers because I like working in a non-destructive way as much as I possibly can. Um, that just means that when you have the layers set up in a way that they're all stacked, right? Even though you're not I'm not organized. Um, it provides optionality. So if I want to go back and change something, I can do that as well. Okay. So right here, I want to add a glow to the moon. So I'm going to just have a nice big brush, right? And you can see there's a little bit of white showing up. All right. There, I, there's the undo. There's the redo. There's the undo. There's the redo. All right. Just want to add a little bit of, a little bit of glow. To this moon all right we can just paint that in and it's kind of a white on this layer so just a little few enhancements here all right to see those enhancements let me go ahead and begin multi-select mode i'll pick these layers that we have on top and i'll group those and there you go there it is without the enhancements it's already a good looking image really interesting but i can turn those on or off and you can see there are some of our modifications that we've added. All right, so pretty handy way to do this. 
If we want to further modify things, we can as well. Say we want to make some of these rocks a little bit darker. We can do that. All right, I'm just going to make a selection here and just keep adding to the selection, just in the areas that are shadowed and away from the moon. Let's increase our contrast. Or it might be the case that maybe there's another star down there or something, right? That's projecting light. And we can play with those options and see what that looks like as simply as painting that in. All right, so let's start with some dark, maybe just a dark teal here. All right, so I can paint in just over these rocks. All right, just like that. Let's deselect and play with the blending mode here as well. Actually, I want to do overlay. Yeah, something like that. So now we have a little bit more contrast happening there, okay? Just to kind of help this feel more like some sort of body that is floating. All right. I'm going to try something here because I want there to be some depth under this planetary floating platform or whatever. So let's make a new layer. And I'm going to just kind of select in a jagged way just behind. All right, just a little bit there, maybe a little peak, peaking of some rocks. If you want to add to the selection, we can just draw and it'll add to that selection just like that. All right. Maybe a little bit over on this side. And now, since that's all behind, we can just go in and paint. Now, I may want to paint with the color on the canvas, so tapping the eyedropper tool is going to allow me to select a color, right? Maybe it's lighter, maybe it's darker, whatever you want to select. And now I can just paint in on this layer, all right? That's going to give this more of a feel. Let's go ahead and deselect. Go ahead and deselect here, but more of a feel like, oh, this is actually now a floating platform. So again, using the power of Photoshop camera to completely shift and modify this image. I'll show you guys where it started, just in case you're just joining. All right, Let's see if I can find the right image. All right, I believe it was in photos. So let me go to my photos here and that was going to be in Adobe Live demo. Nope, it's not there. Shoot. All right. The curse of being unorganized coming to roost or bear, I should say. <laughs> okay. For some reason, I can't find that image. So, um, anyhow. But we went from day to night with the moon and then added our galaxy image here. And now we have a really interesting composition. If we want to further colorize the image, we can do that as well. I'm going to make a new layer. And let's say I want to add some pink down at the bottom. Let's make this, make this truly interstellar. All right, I can start to add some pinks down here play with the blending mode. Oh, it's already set to overlay. Look at that. All right, or even vivid light. I like stacking layers as well. All right, so don't be afraid to stack things, play a little bit, see what you come up with. All right, let's reduce the size here. And like I was saying earlier, maybe we have, maybe we have some light hitting these rocks. Okay. And we have a little bit of light hitting these rocks. You can play with the opacity and so on, just to lessen that effect, but have it be a part of our image. Change our blending mode if necessary. And like I said, just play. Creativity is about making those connections and discoveries when we go free. All right. So real quick recap of Photoshop camera. Let me switch over here. Actually, we're out of time. I've got to, I've got to show you guys a schedule. Okay. So here's, here's a bit of what's coming up today. Um, and again, download Photoshop camera. If you haven't yet, um, 
check it out because it's really powerful. Now my head's a little bit covered, but let me uh, let me scale myself down here just a little bit so I can still see you or you can see me. <laughs> All right. So Photoshop camera, super awesome. Here's the studio. If we want to change things, here's another one of those images we created. Again, if I wanted to shoot that over to Photoshop, I can do that um, by saving to my camera roll and then importing and creating those manipulations I want. Super, super powerful. We can change our lenses. If I want this photo to have night shift now, we can do that. There's a beautiful example of that time lapse. Okay, super awesome. All right, we can save that and so forth. But coming up today, guys, you just hung out with me, Spencer Nugent, <laughs> working on Photoshop on the iPad, as well as Photoshop camera. Up next, we have the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with Paul. He's here in the chat. What's up? Then we have photo editing with Lizzie Pierce. At 11.30, we have the Illustrated Daily Creative Challenge with Andrew Hawkrattle. I hope I pronounced your name right, Andrew. At 12, we have branding and, identity, branding and identity design with Molly. At 2, we have the Adobe XD Creative Challenge, Daily Creative Challenge with Jesse Showalter. At 2.30, draw along with Kyle Webster. I need to try and make that this time. Kyle's pretty awesome. Everyone's awesome. But I'm, in, I'm partial to drawing. And at 3, we have the design off with Voodoo Val and Seely Bow. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. It's been a pleasure. I want to see you guys get creative. So be sure to check out the Photoshop Discord. That is bit.ly slash PS Discord. Post your creation, share. If you make any interesting discoveries, share those as well. Um, I want to see how creative you can be. I'll hang out there for a bit and check out some of your photo creations. Whether you're working on SLR or your mobile device, Adobe products, Photoshop camera, and Photoshop can help you really enhance your photos and make them pop. So get creative, think about text, brushes, borders, clipping masks, lenses, filters, all the things you can do to make your social media story really pop. All right, thank you, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Take care, peace and love everyone.